two, we're going to start the Arlington Housing Authority regular monthly board meeting. Um, just a heads up, we are recording this audio with these phones. We also have this convention thing up here that uh, records, and it's a camera that goes to those that are speaking so that um, it's not working. I have it died to pivot and troubleshoot. So. so we're also zooming. So yeah. Jack is operating the Zoom. Uh, and we have some folks watching. Or, or so. so let me explain. What we've done this fall, I'm going to continue until we <laughs> visit all our facilities. We're, hosting, we're having our board meetings at the different facilities. So last month we were at Drake Village. Uh, we're here today, and the board is going to tour the units that were repaired from the fire. Um, and then we're going to go to uh, Winslow and Cusack uh, to show how to do uh, East End. Uh, so, and we're doing this to uh, give the floor to the residents that live in this complex. Okay. So uh, I'm suspending the public participation guidelines for the residents that live here. And uh, I don't think we've anybody else submit a request to speak, but so when we get the public participation, we'll go to the presidents of the search of the different facilities, and then residents or their family members that are here with them, uh, feel free to ask us anything, uh, and uh, we'll open the floor to that. So we'll do that towards the end. Uh, but we typically have 12 or 13 things we go through, uh, and we typically go through them quickly. I mean, the board basically has to approve all expenditures and regulatory things. Jack will give his report mm -hmm. of what's going on. And uh, I mean, it's a very complex organization. House, uh, thousands of people. Uh, you know, we have many, many units and facilities. So it's very complex. And as you know, Chris, uh, it's up to the, the, uh, the, the whole maintenance program, facility program. Uh, so if you have a question for Chris, absolutely. You see it. I see Dennis also in the back. Uh, Dennis is on Chris's staff. So, uh, so let's begin. So uh, we're going to call the order. Uh, Doc, you're here. Nick, are you? Joanne, and, and Fiorella. Okay. And, uh, now we move to the executive director's report. So, yeah. Thank you. So some some updates on the capital side. The roof project at Drake Village is still in the design phase. Uh, the electrical panel upgrades at the cottages and Hauser Building are also in the design phase. The electrical panel upgrade projects project at the cottages is also still in the design phase. The creative placemaking and door project at the cottages and at Drake Village as a whole will be going up to date soon. Uh, the low bid for the fire alarm project will be presented at tonight's meeting. At Chestnut Manor, the electrical panel upgrade is in the design phase also. Staff are working hard. On, the, um, on another note, staff are working hard to get the vacant units at Chestnut Manor leased up. Uh, those are the units that were just that were left vacant as a result of the fire last January. Uh, we expect lease ups to begin uh, for November 1st. And like I said, staff are working really hard to get those applicants and other individuals leased up so we'll be able to fill those units effective 11 1. Um, I also want to take this time to acknowledge Dennis Broden, Chris Partridge, Rolly Demers. Uh, for the hard work they put into making sure that not only those units were brought back online, but uh, they were brought back online ahead of schedule. As you know, or if you remember, those units were supposed to be brought back online in January. So we're well ahead of schedule, and with the affordable housing crisis, this is a huge uh, victory. And, and I, again, I thank them. At Winslow Towers, we're also waiting for confirmation related to when the air source heat pump project will begin. Um, we're continuing to work with the HCD and the contractor to determine a schedule for when the building envelope project will be completed. And just to circle back to Chestnut Manor as well, in regards to the air source heat pump project and window project that are set to begin, we, we're still waiting for a start date uh, from the contractor, but once we have that understood, we'll communicate that to the residents. At Monotony Manor, we're, we continue to be encouraged that the window replacement project is on schedule. Uh, DHCD has been assisting us in preparing for the designer selection committee. The draft of the study has been completed and it shows a pathway to the AHA to complete the deep energy retrofit as well as which includes the window replacement project. Uh, we are waiting for stakeholders and other agencies that assisted with the, uh, with the draft to, to finish providing feedback to the study and hope to be able to provide the finished 
report fairly soon. Uh, Action Inc. will be completing some weatherization work at Minotomy Manor, uh, Cusack Terrace, and the Drake Cottages, in, in addition to some other work that uh, should help create water savings at our buildings, uh, uh, as well as some, some savings related heating costs and otherwise. Uh, we're, we're also waiting for confirmation related to when they will begin work on that. The Council on Aging and Board of Health conducted COVID-19 booster and flu clinics this past month at all the senior public housing developments. Uh, we're extremely grateful uh, to the Town of Arlington for continuing to provide us this support and assisting our residents with this type of service. I also want to remind residents that test kits are available uh, for residents as well as staff. We will make efforts to provide them you know, throughout the fall and if any residents, including here at this meeting, need test kits for the COVID-19, for for COVID please let your property manager or resident services coordinator know so that we can get that to you. Resident services coordinator, resident service coordinators and property managers have also been working hard to help residents seek out rental assistance. Uh, we're grateful to the many different resources that are available um, and we're hopeful that they'll be able to assist as many residents as possible. They also were able to issue out the newsletter this, this past month, which I'll provide you a copy shortly. And um, they're working on putting together a resource book for residents that, that will not only help existing residents, but help applicants coming into housing. Um, one staff update, our new FSS coordinator, Sarah Paleo, will be starting next week. We're really excited for her to, to begin and, and um, help us get moving on that program. And then I also want to congratulate Nick Metropolis uh, for being um, recognized as Community Member of the Year by the Rotary Club. Thank some more details at the next board meeting but i think as far as you know um you know the experiment which was instead of having the one meeting a month with all the tents associations versus having the meetings at the different developments i think it's been a, a good experiment in the sense that we've been able to provide focused time to each of those tents associations and and uh, i think you know we're continuing to work on communication in ways in which we can and better serve the residents at those developments but um i think that this has definitely been a worthwhile uh you know, it, it, you know, time investment by the staff. So I think it's it's worthy of, you know, continuing. Yeah. After three years of hard work from meeting members uh, and the resident of the agenda um, there was some additional edits made between um, you know from recommendations from our attorney John Greco 
and that were accepted by at &T. So um, we're finally ready. This is the final version. This won't appear on future agendas, but we wanted to make sure that the board uh, voted on um, this updated version so that they did vote on the on the version that is signed and executed. Yeah. Okay with it? Yes. So, um, minutes are the recording. Yeah, the recording, and, um, and, and then also Sandy's on the call as well. Okay, good. So, the motion was moved by Gar and second by Nick. Moved by Nick and second by Fiorella. Uh, all in favor, Gar? Yes, Nick. Yes, Grant. Yes, Fiorella. Yes. Uh, yes. I think that motion carries. Number five, approval of the application for self family self sufficiency grant. Jack. Uh, the great thing about the grant this year is that instead of having, you know, only applying for one year, we're going to be able to apply for two years at once, which will um, definitely help us next year. And they allowed us to build in a 5% increase uh, for next year. So it's, it's already takes into consideration the cost of living increases. Uh, so we're, request, we're requesting 93000 for this year and um, 97650 for the following. Excellent. Motion to approve that. One question. Yep. I know spent last year on the FS. I think so. So last year, I think no, no our, our grant, I believe, was just seventy-four thousand dollars last year. Uh, this year, we got a higher grant, but yeah. you know, due to staff changes and you know, just you know, some other requirements that got put up by, by HUD relating to what the spending could be for, uh, we didn't touch it. I think last year we got approved for one hundred twenty some okay. thousand, but it, it's so restricted on what you can spend it on that uh, you better not be um, safe and cautious as far as. Yeah. I move to approve FSS grant application. Second. So uh, moved by Gar, second by Nick. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Nick. Nick. Grant? Yes. You're all? Yes. Right. Yes. The motion carries. Number six, approval of the application for the resident. Service coordinator. Uh, I can check. So this is going to um, this is an application for five years more years of funding for the resident services coordinator position. Uh, we've been extremely grateful for this position. It really helped us uh, better engage with the residents and help them uh, break break barriers and, and and find additional resources to help them. Um, so this and the, and the other great thing about this new grant application is it takes into consideration uh, the need for additional funding. For this position, so it's going to increase by by ten thousand total, but it's going to allow us to increase the salary portion uh, by fifteen thousand, which is going to allow us to increase the hours for the resident services coordinator, which is going to help the residents at large. Again, yeah. 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 Right now, it's eighteen hours. Yeah. I'm hoping to increase it to about. 25 to 26 hours. Right. We have it moved by Fiorella, second by Joanne. All in favor, Doc? Yes. Heck, yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian? Yes. Move to number seven, approval of the up updated lease with the Elliott Inc. Uh, BDS for the Donnelly House at what Mass Ave. And, and I'd like to table this this uh, this item. Uh, the reason being is we're still working with Elliott uh, related to some 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 um, some things we need to work out with past leases and potential rental uh, rent rent owed. So uh, we we just have some additional work that we need to do on our end and on on their end before we present it to the board. Table that one. We're going to table number seven. Number eight, uh, approval of the low bidder and award of contract to Jupiter Electric Inc. for Arlington Housing Authority Fire Alarm System Upgrade Project for the Hauser Building, the amount of $819,900, including the sub bidder Carlisle Engineering, in the amount of $238,670. Jack, can you think of talk about that one? No, we're, we're just very excited to move forward with this uh, very important project. Motion to accept that. Second. So we have that move by Nick, second by Gar. Uh, all in favor, Gar? Yes. Yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
line of the is, so that passes with the number nine, the HUD's uh, stability voucher program. So I'm, I'm not asking for a vote by the board tonight on this item. I just wanted to provide some additional information context. So we did we did request a uh, we did we did submit a, a letter of interest to HUD for this program. And so what the program is is it's going to it's going to allow us to partner with um, with a continuum care agency, which in Massachusetts would fall under balance of state, which essentially boils down to the Somerville Homeless Coalition. So we'd be able to partner with the Somerville Homeless Coalition. They'd be able to provide referrals uh, for individuals that are that are in uh, homeless homelessness or in crisis and homelessness. Um, and there would be a separate pathway to getting a voucher, one of the special stability vouchers. And there would be different types of waivers involved with those vouchers that would help be help those individuals in, in experiencing homelessness um, you know, get on the program and, and break some of the barriers that typically inhibit them from you know getting in a housing program. So we'll so right now we're waiting for we'll be waiting for HUD to make a decision as far as you know how many vouchers they they would potentially provide us. And then at that point we'll submit a formal application. Well, we'll I'll come to the board with a formal application for your approval, which will include the potential voucher count if they want to move forward with us. So this is sort of the exactly. Well, is there a time restriction on this? Do you give it by a certain date or something? I've already submitted the letter of uh, interest, so um, at this point we're just waiting for for HUD to respond, and then they'll give us additional deadlines at that point. So uh, information only on that one. We're going to table number 10, recognition of the Drake Village Tenants Association. Uh, Fred, the new elected president, asked us to table that. And then we have approval of the regular minutes, regular meeting minutes of 921-22. Can't look at those. Any questions on those? So that was moved by Fiorella, seconded by Nick. All in favor, God. Yes, Nick. Yeah. Joanne. Yeah. Fiorella. Yes. Ryan said yes. We'll move on to participation. LCO presidents. Um, do we have Jen on the line? Oh, she's right here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we have one person. <laughs> better, not online. Better. There we go. So, Jen, <laughs> president of the Mount of Vienna. Go ahead, Jen. You're right there. Okay, so we have a nice piece of cheese, so we can focus on this thing. Here's the popcorn on our strawberry flakes. So we all have to catch the cheese for tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. It's not sure if it will be inside or out. Our people have to do this. And then we can also do this. Okay. Regardless, we can hold it up. Not inside, but we can hold it outside.
test problems for these and all that stuff. And then top level is When is your meeting with Jack? What do you next week typically? It's going to be next week. We just got to confirm it. Uh, confirm the yeah. time. Yeah, I just figure out something. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mike from Cusack. Mike, yeah, Mike's not online either, right? No. Uh, Fred from Drake is not here. So Chestnut, we've got to work on that one. Is Doreen from Winslow online? Yes. Doreen, you there? Hello. Hey, Doreen. Okay, I I lost visual, so I I, I don't know if you could hear me or not. Okay, um, I. Okay, I only have a couple of items. We've um, we're having a Halloween party a week from Saturday. People are gonna dress up and have Diagostinos cater us. They're all excited about that. We had our first annual, uh, first monthly annual pet pantry. Um, I went and picked up um all kinds of dog and cat food, um, from a place in Arlington that they donate to and they give it to us free and um, we put it out and everything went so it looks like I'll be doing that every month for them and then um, we we see we know that we are getting a new TV and the people are thrilled to be able to do their karaoke they can't wait I'm sorry I can't hear you no, I'm just wondering if you get your karaoke machine yet uh, no, we, someone has one here. I mean, we don't really need a karaoke machine because where we're going to have the new TV, we can log in and get um, either a subscription or we can get free um, music on the new TV where it's a smart TV. So we're going to use his um, karaoke machine and with the, that will have the lights and the microphone and then the music and the words will come through the TV. Excellent. Excellent. That's very good. Make That's sure it for me. Make sure you take lots of pictures of that Halloween party. <laughs> I will. I just won't put names on the people. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Doreen. No problem. Thank you. Okay. We open to the floor to the residents uh, of Chestnut. Anybody have any questions? Or... Yep. Hi. Uh, my name's Linda, and uh, I have got two issues. One is a bit of a pet peeve. And that's the enunciator in the entryway over here will beep and beep and beep and beep. Is that what's beeping? Oh, is that no. what's beeping? That sound right now is the dryer telling you it's done, except it was done four hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> you got to open the door to shut it up? Yeah, it won't turn off. It's broken. <laughs> oh, oh, it does it all the time. And that's the new ones, right, Chris? That's the new ones. Yeah, the new ones. I saw the service and there. They call the checks out. Well, they come and then they fix it, and then about a week later, it happens again. <laughs> so, okay. I don't know. But the noise she's speaking about is a different noise. Okay. On the dryer? So if you call and they come, and it keeps going? They turn it off, and then it comes happens again a week later. That's when you got to let Chris and his staff know. Yeah. Dennis is Chris, and then he'll take it to the next level. That, you know, um, it shouldn't be like that. Uh, I'm sorry. So what's... What's yeah. the one you're talking So the about? other noise is actually more annoying than what we're hearing right okay. now. It's yeah. this piercing beep. And it goes on and on for like all weekend long. And A, it's annoying. And what, what B, is it? Is it the door beep or something? What, no, what it's the uh, annunciator. The Chris fire Chris. alarm annunciator. Oh, so yeah, that was tripped um, as some of the work was being done here for the restoration project. And it was broken circuit. So I know it had gone on for a while, but we had two teams working tonight. It would reset itself every 24 hours. And like and so the fire department was aware of it and they knew it wasn't like a real trouble code. So finally, this uh, this past week, we were able to get it diagnosed and taken care of. So it's off now. It won't be returning. Okay. Because uh, my concern was it's like a yeah, right. you know, false alarm. And then yeah. when there's a real so, alarm. So had you called the maintenance line to report that? 
Um, I did once, and and uh, the operator said that she's got she had gotten a lot of calls about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I think it's important. We said this is great. You know, we have a new system to report these things. So if you call and it, and it shuts off and then it does it again and again and again, yeah. make sure you call again and again and again. Because the office doesn't know what's going on unless, okay. unless like, if Dennis is here and he is it or something like that. But we don't know that we think the problems are fixed. So, you know, don't hesitate to call a bunch of times and report it to that number. Yeah, okay. Because that documents and creates a path for us to monitor follow up to ensure that it's been fixed, that what the timeliness of the fix and so forth. So and that's any any issue you have from a maintenance perspective, make sure okay. you call. Yeah. Don't wait and don't assume. Absolutely. So we're fixing right? Yes, yes, yes we're fixing the fire and arch design. We just gotta fix the create the dry yeah. 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 so, <laughs> take the clothes off or the other. Yeah. I don't know how to fold them. If that company were to occur in the hallway again, would it actually mean something is wrong now? So if there's an actual emergency or fire, uh, it goes right to the fire department. How about anybody else? Yep. I have a second issue. Um, following up on what Jerry and Preston said um, about the, the pedestrian uh, walk light, um, I've attended several of the meetings discussing that. And I know each department in town respects each other and they try to support each other without stepping on each other's toes. But this whole issue about the, the crossing light, it's going to be three years since this woman was killed, right. going to 7 a.m. mass yeah. in the crosswalk, and the driver was not impaired. Yeah. And the town has really dragged its feet. They're moving forward, but it's not they are complete. It's not a done deal because they have to approve it, send it out for bids, you know, blah, 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 blah. And part of my concern is that what an early version of the plan had the installation of the pedestrian activated linking cross sign at the very end of the project, which was going to be like three to five years down the line once they started. Mm -hmm. So if the board here you know, hears anything or they're talking with somebody, if you can kind of encourage them to make that light a priority because what's happened is it's they've gotten into bicycle lanes and narrowing the lanes and all this other stuff which I've called window dressing. But the the thing about the light has 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 been really slow to respond and I cannot figure out why. Which board is crying. Isn't that the isn't that a state road on top of it? Yeah. yeah so, I thought I read somewhere the state. Which, which board is right? Which yeah, they did. They did get the state approval, um, but there was a, a delay in their submitting the the, uh, the paperwork to the state. So who's doing the work? The state or the town of Arlington? I think the town of Arlington, but this, I I don't know about the funding. Whether the state's going to keep it going or not. Yes. Do you want? Yeah. And I totally agree with you. I've never been able to do that. Yeah. Wouldn't it be helpful in the court? Yeah. And say you would like to start yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah, it is dangerous. It is dangerous. I, I will wait until everything's clear. I'm walking across and a car will zip yeah, out of one of those right. curves and it's like, it's yeah, too bad. Yeah. 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 We'll send the letter to the so why don't we make a motion? Uh, so we make a motion that you know that we can surprise a letter that we had our board meeting here. It's still a hot item for the residents. You know, that's a letter that's not pushing it. So, we have, uh, so Sandy, we have a motion by Nick and second by Joanne to have the board author a letter to 
to uh, encourage the town to move very quickly on yeah, this. Yeah, this, um, yeah we'll figure out exactly who to send it uh, for us to uh, encourage them to move very quickly on this, including the light. I would just assume the light is the first thing you put in. I know. It doesn't make sense. But they said that the, uh, they said that the sidewalks and the road and everything well, have to be taken care of before the light goes. So, <laughs> so, so let's let's just go first. I am in favor. Uh, so Paul, in favor. Nakar, Nick, Nick, Joanne, yes. Apirel, yes. Brian, is he is? Go ahead. Um, a couple minutes ago, the designer last note. Um, I think I think the 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 project turned from pedestrian safety following the death of Andrew Brochus into a traffic control road issue yeah. with the pedestrian walkway kind of tacked on the end. Yeah. Um, partly question about the city of So we'll do that and, and maybe in this process we can have a discussion before we send the letter to see. You know, is this, yeah. is this fast? Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. That's a great idea. Great Thank idea. you. Any other residents here to address? Yep. I just found out recently that she needed to All right. Very informal. My name is Michael Presitelli. I'm a resident at Winslow. The situation over there, there's a situation over there involving only by that same type of metro house. Personally, myself, because of his tenant. I've been awake since sometime on the last week. One spot, 24 hours sometimes. More than one day consecutive sometimes. Snapping walls. I've gotten to know two thirds of the police department by first name. The three years that I've lived here, this is the main one. Started before me. But did you say? Did you say? Did you say Winslow? Yes. Okay. So why don't we do this? Uh, uh, this this is an action item that Ted will go into the past. So let's talk to you after the meeting, Jack. It will set you on the path on how to make this uh, officiate this process. Because there's a process that we can we follow as a board and as management. Uh, sure. That you know, um, that we can help you with this. So, I mean, we don't need another thing. I mean, if I may, yeah. First off, uh, if I have anything to say in the matter of the uh, Jack Jack City on that, Jack has been aware of the situation. Jack used the impression that the housing authority uh, and the person who's dealing with it that appears to be tenants. As far as I'm concerned, Jack's out of the picture, with all due respect to that. Secondly, there are two aspects to this. What has happened since I moved in three years ago, and what might happen now that we can come to bed with the problems. The part that I dealt with up until now is likely to be less reasonable. And hopefully, it's going to go beyond housing. So the effects of this can't come person. What I'm here to find out, to try to find out is, 
toy. I was just interested in resolving this as all right, well, it's a little tough to answer that when we don't know anything about it. We haven't heard Jack very sure. So typically, you know, with public housing, as you probably know, there's a process to all this. Mm -hmm. There's leases, and if people mm -hmm. break the lease by causing disturbances, mm -hmm. then there's a process to evict them and so forth. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a lawyer that, that is involved in this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he, very much on top of this stuff. So I can, so to help you along, mm -hmm. let's, you and I sit right after. Sure. And let's, let's figure out, um, and Jack will have to be part of it, understand that he's the director, but, um, uh, but let's see if we can get the sum resolved and some, some plan to address this with, with whoever this person is in, uh, that lives above you or next to you. In the building. In the building, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, but, there's some confidentiality involved and I'm not wanting I, I'm wanting to minimize what gets thrown yeah. through the public. Right. Well, that's right. That's why instead of you having a good detail, yes. more than one of the sit sit out the wood. I'm curious. You know, we do have um, problems with certain people in our building as well uh, that cause mm -hmm. disturbances and cause yeah. you know issues with other tenants. You know, and of course, it's not everybody's public business how it's dealt with. But yeah. you know, is there a process to protect tenants that come forward with concerns about other tenants. Like that? Well, it has to start with the tenant filing an official complaint. Yeah, but I there's, mean, a lot of times there's it protection in that, right? Uh, well, mm -hmm. here's the problem. You know, everybody has a separate lease. Everybody has his rights, as they say. Uh, if there's a tenant that is a is an issue, you know, uh, you fill out a complaint. Uh, the the management looks at it determines the validity of the complaint, the lawyer pipes in, and if it's a matter of free speech, not much we can do about it. But if it's, um, you know, if somebody's blowing air horns all night, for instance, or not you a know, safety. it's a public use, it's a safety issue. If somebody's yeah. pulling the fire alarm all the time, that's a safety issue. Yeah. So we have in the past with, you know, and that's in your lease, you can't, you can't cause a disturbance um, for the building, as they say. So we have evicted people in the past that have done those things. Now, unfortunately, with COVID um, and, and society today in Massachusetts, it's very difficult to evict people, even if they cause crazy things. It's very difficult, and and it's a time perspective. You got to give them so much warning and so much. So it's, it, you know, my advice and what I've said to people is call the police. Your first line is call the police. Document it. Call the police. I don't care if you call the police every day. If that person's <laughs> they well, probably get annoyed. Listen, they're here to serve. The population and they want to be called and when we speak to them they want to be called so it's so if there's truly somebody disturbing somebody and you you know uh, whatever i watch call the police and in my particular excuse me yeah. in my particular situation after i called in three times in one episode um they don't want to come they don't want to come because they feel that these people are doing nothing to be involved with whatever they're doing. Yeah, that, well, you know what, let, let me I take can, put that thought in. I, I can imagine they would be annoyed after so many calls. The right? police chief yeah. would take a totally different path. Yeah. So oh, whether no, an no, individual no, officer no. says, stop calling me, yeah, we want to know that. Because uh, right, he's yeah. he or she is going outside her scope of responsibility. Oh. So if the police chief wants to know, and the police chief has told us, <laughs> they hit a serve. But the other thing is, if you call me for it to police, remember that now documents from our perspective. So it documents is, gives us a foundation to, to cause, as a cause of action. <laughs> you know, as we're looking and adding these things up, if we've got, you know, 10 documented police reports of distributing the peace. Well, that, that's great ammunition for our attorney to go to the court and say, look, we've got to pick this person. Like we have 10 document reports, let's say, from five different policemen, you know, police officers. So, you know, that's why I said it's important to call. Um, but, Yeah, we want people. We don't want our residents to live in fear. I yeah, mean, I think that's you know, I mean, housing is 
developed from senior housing to to a different structure of housing, and you know we're we're, we're regulated as to what percentage of seniors and what's called under you know under sixty five, what you want to call it. So we're regulated. We have to put different percentages in, and, and then sometimes we have people that have issues. And uh, but there's nothing we can do about it. You know, uh, the state now controls the list. They we tell them when there's an open unit, they fill it basically. We screen it, and you know we we can't pick and choose. So so we do have problem people, and you know uh, you're not alone in that down here, Mike. You're not alone in the other way. But you know police reports are important. Uh, uh, and like I said, call them 10 times. I don't care. I don't care if the policeman says, hey, stop calling me. You call them again. And then you report it here and we'll go talk to the chief. The chief will talk to the officer that says, stop calling. But uh, that, that's what they're there for. So, so let's talk after. Uh, you and I. All right. We'll figure out something. Thank you. What, anybody else? Um, yeah. I think I wanted to add to the issue of the um, crosswalks. You know, I um, haven't been able to attend a lot of meetings about the reorganization of it, but I followed Paul, who used to live in the building online, he's posted a lot about it. And, you know, my experience more close to when I moved in a little over a year ago was not the sidewalk where the woman was killed, but the next one crossing from the, the church home. Yeah. to funeral. this the funeral. funeral home. Yes, that one to the funeral home. Um, I came I halfway and there was a police officer that was stopped for me and there was a car in front of him parked because that was how long the red light was and as i walked in front of the police officer on this side of the road a car halfway on the curb flew by about two inches from me to go cut everyone on the right side and you know i was didn't expect it didn't see it coming and thankfully wasn't hit but had i been one step forward i would have been thrown 20 feet and you know, thankfully the cop, as I'm standing in front of his car, saw this and went right after him and you know pulled him over and arrested him. And about three days later, those white posts came up. Yeah, the dangerous so road. It, it's very the dangerous. dangerous. Road. I, I, I mean, Yeah, I'm surprised with the church and the mass case that we haven't had many, many more people. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Sounds 
lasagna me encanta. So is the plan completed? The uh, uh, plan was presented, but I think people were in favor of it. But I think if they're going to, there's going to be more discussion, something like that. I didn't understand that. I can find out tomorrow. I'll write something out. Like there, well, I would call them tomorrow, and if they're accepting more comments, then put the contact information into a little, you know, to all residents. regards to reporting things. When I first moved into the building about five years ago, I had a significant issue with my next door neighbor. They were smoking in there, two people. Yeah. Smoking cigarettes, smoking pot, to, to a degree that I literally could not sleep in the adjoining room. And I reported it to the housing authority. And what I was told over and over again is, and I kept saying that this is supposed to be a non-smoking building, is do you see them smoking? And I had to say, no, they're in their apartment. I don't have x-ray vision, which is, which is, I wanted to say that I did. 
But that was the response that I got. It, do you have you seen that we need to have somebody see them do this in order for us to do anything? There's no security cameras in their apartment, so yeah. we can't. So this is one of those things where how do you know it came from this unit, not this unit, and not upstairs, not up to the vent? Yes, I mean, in front of the door. I know, I know what you're saying. Right you, it's, you, you can okay. smell it, but it's, uh, well, it's a I, tough one. It, it, yeah. it was definitely coming from that. Yeah. Well, I mean, was, somebody's apartment is no the door, it's all you other, can smell. other places. You know, I can understand. Yeah, I know that. So what we, 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 we have new staff, as you know, we have a net now. So I mean, this is so yeah. this is where our staff and that yeah. and it's uh, and it's in this building, right? So right. This yeah. is where you tell a net, and this is where net's going to go knock on the door and say, "Listen, we we'll cut these reports yeah. for small media." No, they stuff. did nothing. Well, and, and she's going to do it again and again and again, and then it's going to get to a point where if net. Documents she's been there five times and still smell smoke when they open the door. Then we potentially talk to our lawyer and see what we can find out. But again, you kind of need need the door to open. We need that net to smell the smoke. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy as it is. Yeah. But, well, yeah. yeah. They they yeah. basically they were not responsive. Yeah. The people the yeah. housing yeah. sorry. Sometimes I have seen even uh, visitors. This is what we don't have to do it. Is that something that where the maintenance goes in every year? Is that something that's somehow we added to the list? I don't know if it's a good thing. Well, you'll know if you're not smoke. Right. Yeah. Is that something that could be added in the report? You know, is that in the annual? Inspection stuff? No. Yeah, there is. They're part of the form. I believe. Yeah. But you should go to the point. Yes, I think we'll get to that and get to that. So, like your boss and stuff. So, I would say, you know, not to belabor it, but Annette, who is the Regarding the coverage of cameras, I mean, yeah, it's 
and then we wait. Right. You're always going to have blind spots to some extent. So what is the purpose of having things? From my understanding, this building is very well covered. Uh, Chris looks at it. Yeah. In terms of the camera covers, um, as uh, Brian mentioned, they could be moved and manipulated if there are hot spots or troubled areas. Uh, but in terms of how they were laid out originally, it was largely on, on a building like Winslow to see uh, people in and out of the elevators and in and out of the hallways, not like directly on specific units. There was a general coverage uh, for safety and maintenance reasons, uh, but in terms of it, like I mentioned, it's a specific area, we can certainly you know, support. Is it very helpful to see all right, email, email, you'll get three quick. So I was just thinking uh, where we kind of said that I'm not a maid, we have to go along with the cameras and all that. We have suggestions of like, okay, well, this is an obvious blind spot, maybe let's report towards that. I don't know, I think that's something that would be helpful for the tenants. This is where the trouble is. I think in this case, probably have to double the camera. Get one going this way, you have three or four units this way, you have to put the camera going that way. It would be a matter of, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and the question is, is the network big enough to handle double and etc.? It's a bigger issue, but oh, you can look at it. I mean, no, I, I think she's talking about the oh. I know that my next door neighbor smoked, and she might smoke marijuana. My way of dealing with it is just to, I don't want to jump in the middle of that. But the other thing that I can do is I can have all these garbage bags right out in the stores. So I don't know what happened. So my apartment was clean, but anyway, those shopping bags were gone. I wonder, you know, what happened. Did they take them from your apartment? Yeah, they had to be taken from my apartment. And I asked. And they said no, so I'm not pursuing anything. But, you know, and as far as anybody smoking, I really don't care. Yeah. I'm an ex smoker. Yeah. You know, and I'm, yeah, I'm grateful not to smoke. All right. Any other comments? So we have a thank you for attending. Thank you for speaking up. It's, uh, Good to get out and meet and greet this refreshments here. We'll be here for a little bit. So I would make a motion to adjourn. Wait a second. So the motion is made by Gar and second by Isabella. Uh, all in favor now? Yep. Win. Isabella, yes. And Brian's yes. So that motion carries. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.